What would you use a strobe light for? Any guesses? Or maybe you don't have to guess, maybe you know the answer. What would you use a strobe light for? Disco dancing. A disco dancing, right. What else? <laughs> of course. That's a modern, that's a modern innovation. All right, you can look at motors. You can measure the frequency of motors or look at them while they're moving, okay? Uh, we're going to look at that particular application first, okay? And then we're going to look at something that's a little bit more fun. Um, so let's put, we're going to put this disc up here. Our motor is a fan, or it used to be until we took the blades off. We'll get it going. And Paul's going to shine the light on it here. <laughs> and what you try to do with the stroboscope is get the motion to appear like it stopped. Okay. I think maybe we can leave the room lights on for this. Okay, he's just about got it here. Okay. He's doing a little bit of fine tuning. Okay. Now, if this were a motor that we call a synchronous motor, it would always turn at the same rate, or it's supposed to. Okay. And if you were looking at a strobe light and you got it to look perfectly stopped, then that's what you would want to see. But if there was something wrong with the motor and every so often maybe its frequency changed, um, then you would notice it with the strobe light. Okay? This particular motor is not synchronous. It doesn't rotate at a constant rate. It changes slightly. So sometimes it moves one way and sometimes it moves the other way. Okay? Would somebody like to come up here and touch this to verify that it really is still turning fast? It won't hurt you. Okay, there we go. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, now, strobe light can be used to measure how fast this is turning, okay? Now the reason it looks stopped is because, ideally, this makes one rotation every time that makes one flash. So let's suppose you see one of these black pieces of pie there when the flash goes off, okay? Then the disc makes one rotation, and the next time the flash goes off, that black piece of pie is in exactly the same place. If it's always in the same place when you see it, it doesn't look like it's moving. And that's the principle behind the stroboscope. Okay? Now, actually, it looks like it's moving slightly this way. Okay? That's because the light, uh, or rather the, the disc, makes slightly more than one full rotation between flashes. They're not quite synchronized. Now, Paul's going to make it appear to go backwards by turning up the frequency a little bit. There we go. Make it a little bit slower than that, Paul. Okay. When it appears, there we go. That's good. When it appears to go backwards, that means it's not making quite one full rotation between flashes. Now, that's something you've all seen before. In motion pictures, have you seen the wagon wheels going backwards on the TV screen? All right, that's because your film is made up of a series of frames, and these go through a projector, and that projector is a flashing light. So it's sort of like a stroboscope in that respect. And if the rate at which those flashes are going off doesn't quite match the rate at which the spokes on the wheels are moving, then you'll get these effects where the wheel might appear to go slowly backward or slowly forward. Okay? All right. Um, let's do one more little thing here that's kind of fun if we can make it work. Uh, do we have any scotch tape here? The wheel rotates this way, so I want to tape this on here so that it flaps in the wind, okay? Okay. And uh, could you get the lights for me? That, that first light switch, just turn, push it up. Uh, the one on the other end. That's the one, turn it up, okay. Okay. And Paul, if you'll get this to look like it stopped here. There we go. That's good. You can see how the piece of paper has been over, right? Listen to that. It looks like it stopped, but it's hitting my finger about how many times per second? Um, the strobe light says 1,800 per second, uh, per minute. 1,800 times per minute. That's about 30 per second. Okay. All right, thanks. Lights, please. Okay, um, another application of strobe lights, and you don't need a strobe light for this. Uh, this was uh, 
This comes from an optical toy that was produced in the 19th century. Uh, and what we do, if we make this rotate, we can make the bird appear as if it's in the cage, okay? Uh, I'll show you how to do this with the stroboscope here. Or maybe somebody can tell me, what do we need to do to make it appear like the bird is going to be in the cage? How fast does this have to be rotating compared to how fast that is flashing? If that flashes once, how far do we want this to rotate if the bird looks like it's... Well, let's show you and then maybe you can tell me how, okay? Okay. There we go. We're getting close. Okay. So the bird's in the cage now, right? Actually, there's two birds in two cages, okay? So anybody want to guess why that's happening? Okay, between flashes, from one flash to the next, how far would this disc rotate, do you think? A half, exactly. Half a rotation. Let's suppose you see the cage at the top and the light flashes, and then it rotates a half turn and the light flashes again. Now the bird's at the top. So you see the bird in the cage, okay? And you see the bird in the cage at about the same time, okay, because of a special property that your eyes have. Um, you can see one image with your eye and your eye retains a memory of that image for a short period of time, but long enough for the next image to come into place. And so visually, they overlap and you get the appearance of them being in the same place, okay? Let's try this with another one. Discs like these were used in the 19th century. They weren't used with stroboscopes. People put them on uh, wheels with slots in the wheels that you could look through, and they would turn them and look, through, look into a mirror at these slots, and they would see the same kinds of motions. Okay. You can see what this is going to do here when, <laughs> when Paul gets it set up right. The ball inside is going to rotate around the inside of that circle. You had it there for just, there it is, there it is. You got it and then it's gone. There, there we go, okay. So it's like a cartoon, right? A cartoon is a sequence of frames and you see them so quickly in succession that they appear to simply overlap each other and give you the illusion of motion. Motion that's not really there, it just seems to be there, okay? Let's try one more here. Okay. This is a stick figure. Okay. And uh, you know, it's like a cartoon. You can make it appear to go run forward or backwards. Slow or fast. And there he stopped in midair. Okay. So we can do scientific measurements with stroboscopes or we can just have fun with them, right?